Hey, what's up guys? So we're back here at the uh, Redenso booth and we're here at SEMA and uh, we're going to do a quick video talking about AI and artificial intelligence, actually uh, helping explain what it is and helping basically teach it to everybody watching. Definitely. So, um, yeah, would you guys like to take it away? Yeah, so a lot of people have asked, like, how did the whole concept of putting artificial intelligence in a radar detector start? And the answer is Sterling over here, who I'd like to introduce to you all. Sterling owns an artificial intelligence consulting company, but he's also a radar detector enthusiast. Um, so we got to talking uh, quite a long time ago, and pretty quickly we, we realized the potential of this to change the entire radar detection industry. And Sterling is responsible for doing most of the nuts and bolts coding that, that enabled this for us. Thank you, John. Yeah, I'm super excited to be here with you guys at SEMA. Um, I'm very happy to have partnered with John on this. He's super passionate about making the absolute best <laughs> radar detector possible. Probably and too passionate. But <laughs> probably, probably too passionate, but he really believes in this technology and he wants it to be the best. So um, I'm just I'm just really happy to be working with you. Yeah. Thank uh, you. We have uh, we have a good team for sure. We do we do. Uh, I think that but AI is kind of getting used so much it's almost hackneyed and kind of becoming a buzzword and oh, people might be using Skynet, it. Skynet, right? I mean, that's, <laughs> it's going to kill us all. That's, John yeah. Connor. Hey, um, they think like robots and stuff. So like, what is AI exactly? Artificial intelligence, what's the intelligence? Artificial intelligence is sort of a broad area, right? But then there's a subset of that called machine learning. And that's okay. where the machine is going to learn by, by itself based on data that we present to it. And I, I think to cut you off there, what he just said is an incredibly important point because this is not a generic buzzword where like we're not we don't use ai where there's no concrete meaning we are doing machine learning with a convolutional neural network right supervised did, did learning I get that right? you did yeah. yes <laughs> so most specifically what we're doing is supervised learning using a deep convolutional neural network and we'll stop like the buzzwords uh, there tech words, but, yeah. but we did want to just define because all of those do have a meaning we're not going to get super deep into the technical nitty gritty here, but it is different than just saying, oh, we use AI and then like kind of generically not defining what that is. This is a real technology. Yes. So, well, actually, we've got like a card game here and we can basically do training. We can do the machine learning essentially. Yes. And so let's actually do some learning and kind of show how AI works. So, Sterling, would you mind if I trained you? Yeah, <laughs> I think this is a perfect example. This is analogous to like how our neural network is working So. or learning. How do you train a neural network? How does it learn? It sounds like such an abstract concept, but it's actually really simple. We actually take recordings of police guns, and for this example, we're gonna use one of a falcon. Okay, so I'm, I'm learning now. It's and falcon. one of an eagle. And we're gonna show the AI literally millions of these pictures. And the important thing to remember is that when we show the AI the pictures, they're labeled. It knows which one's which. So Sterling, I'm going to show you a few more. That's the supervised learning. We're telling yes. it the correct answer. Exactly. Falcon, eagle. Now I want you to take, eagle. I'll give you about 10 seconds to really stare at these. Right now our supercomputer, the one in his brain, or our AI supercomputer, is learning. It's memorizing the general features. It's not an exact card match, which is where the intelligence comes in, but it's getting an idea of what's what. Yeah, I can see, you know, these are kind of similar. Well, they label the same. There's little differences. But I'm kind of getting it. There's these long segments here. My eyes honing in on that. So. So right now your brain is reconfiguring itself to correctly identify these. I'm making synapses. They're they're having weights in the neurons. And, and this, this neurons. is actually how human beings learn. Whether it's a musical instrument or whether it, you have to practice, you know what the right answer is. You got to practice until you can get it. And then once you develop the skill, you can actually do this. What do you think that is? That's uh, that's Falcon. What do you think that is? Eagle. Falcon. Now that looks pretty different than like the ones I was trained on, but I'm still I'm still gonna say eagle. And then finally? Eagle. You got a hundred percent accuracy. And this is where I was actually sweating it there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but this this is where the power of what we call inferencing. This is the intelligent part of it. Because if you look at some of these, uh, like this is one of the labeled eagles. This doesn't exactly match any of these. That's important. This is not just a, a memorization game that the AI does. But when Sterling looked at this, his brain is taking into account thousands of different things about the, the signal without you even thinking about it. 
maybe the width, how many peaks there are, the general, how does it feel when you look at it? I, I love the, that point that you brought up and the data you, ha you collect, you want to be randomized enough so that you learn to generalize and Correct. pick up on the more. We don't want to give it perfect data to train on because the real world is not perfect. It'll, it'll get too specific or the technical word is, is overfit. So we want to generalize by giving it you know, really randomized data in the real world environment. Now, one question people ask is, if you're taking you know, tons of recordings of these guns, well, how do you put all that information in a radar detector and store it? It's very important to understand that we don't have to. Sterling, now that he's trained on these labeled images, he doesn't have to carry around this deck for the rest of his life and say, ah, uh, which, which one is it? Your brain has learned. That means I can get rid of all of these and you know, Eagle, Falcon, Eagle, Falcon, Eagle. It, it's light. You don't have to have a huge hard drive storing all the recorded data because you've learned how to do it. I think you brought up an excellent point that we have you know, gigabytes of data. Terabytes, yeah. But the model is much smaller. It's not, it's not carrying around, it's not carrying around that lookup table or that database. It's, it's a skill. It's, you're right, it's, it's a skill, it's, it's very efficient at being able to uh, discern and generalize these features. And, and people ask about accuracy a lot too, and how I try to explain it is, you know, this, I, we talked a little bit about this with the BSM versus uh, CW police guns, but you could look at these two pictures a hundred times, and you, you're going to get it right a hundred out of a hundred times. I'm not saying it's absolutely perfect, but the, the likelihood of you making a mistake on this is extremely low because you're just visually looking at it. You're not passing it through a bunch of filters, which are constructed in non-ideal ways to discriminate things. If we built a filter for this, an example of a filter would be to say, I want, I want you to know if this is made out of plastic or if it's laminated. Well, both of these are laminated, so it would go through a filter. The next filter says, do they use black ink, yes or no? Goes through the filter. You can have hundreds of those filters, but it's slowing down the process of figuring out which is which and it's not always going to be accurate because both of these signals are getting through our black ink filter. But if I just ask you to look at it, you just know. And you brought up a point about accuracy and BSMs. Um, you know, we say zero BSMs because if you look at the earlier photos, those are so drastically different that, you know, any human would, they had to be, you know, probably had a few for them to get it wrong, right? Yeah, a few bourbons in before I would confuse BSM and, and police CW. And, that, and that's why for our demo, we pick CW signals because those are actually much more similar and is, is more difficult to discern. Yep. I think it's even, like we can't even do it by eye. I the, can't do it by eye, no, but we the can't AI even do can. it. The AI is better than we are, which happens a lot. And it's nice because like if you had a person trying to write an algorithm to figure out what are the differences? Or so even, hard. Or even something simpler like this, every time something else comes out, you have to have a person actually figure out what the differences are, create some filter, some sort of algorithm to differentiate, yeah. and then that's updating it to support this BSM it's, or it's whatever. It's really hard to find those people. I know because before I met Sterling, we were trying to do this. And you know, we do have people that can, but as you pointed out, it's not an ideal thing to do because it's slow, it's not really perfect, and it, I mean, it's just hard to find talented people. So now, I mean, that's why Moz does not filter it out. If this was easy to do algorithm-wise, every detector in the world would be perfect on BSMs. That's not the case, including even our own legacy detectors, which is kind of what we call non-AI detectors, is legacy internally. Um, with this, we record, train, push an update, it's done. And you give it recordings with like thousands of samples like this, tons and tons of data. Millions, right? Millions. How long does that process take? The more the better. 15 minutes? Yeah, yeah. John, John's pretty good at building computers, it turns out. <laughs> well, I was like a new egg trying to buy like a pre-built desktop. Like, he, no, 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 yeah, no, no. He, he was trying to get a lot. I was like, Sterling, you're going to have a stack of RTX 2080 Ti's in the office when you come in. <laughs> so we, yeah, we have a, a, a 42U server and it's full of video cards basically that does this training. Well, one last question. Can it play Crisis? <laughs> yes, it can play Crisis even though it's poorly uh, optimized. Well, we haven't tried yeah. it yet. <laughs> so I guess that's kind of one of the big things here with like the machine learning. It's the machine is learning itself. We're not having to teach it yep. how to tell the difference. Exactly. It blew my mind when the first time, I think the Mazda was the, the, being a hard case, the Mazda was the initial one that we were testing just over and over again. And I remember, the, I remember the moment where we were training it didn't work, training it didn't work, training it didn't work because we were experimenting with different ways to draw the pictures to feed it. And when we got it right, I remember the accuracy during training was like 
50, 70, 90, 99, 99.99. And I was just like, this thing just did in, in, in a minute what we couldn't do as an industry for 20 years. And it just did it like that. It, it's such a revolutionary it, it technology. Yeah. It's a, and it gets applied towards all different industries. So it's it's revolutionizing everything, yeah, we're accelerating actually kinda, our progress. We're kind of late bringing it to radar detection. I mean, it's in security cameras, it's in Google's using it, your cell phones. Recognize faces or anything. Yeah. It's kind of pattern recognition, essentially. I would Generalization. Actually, I would yeah. give us more credit, though, because we're doing edge inference. That's true. What does that mean? So an easy way to explain that is the AI that most people will touch, I think, is most often is Siri, maybe, or, or Android Assistant. And usually on those, if you ask it a question, it will use the internet and send your data to the supercomputer in the cloud, so to speak. Right. That will crunch the numbers and then send the answer back. We didn't want to do that because radar detectors might lose connectivity when driving. I don't want people to have to pay an additional subscription for three or four G data. So we had to build the intelligence into the device. So even if we have no internet connection at all, which we don't, we built the processing power in to blow through these pictures that we're giving it and give you the correct answer very fast. That makes sense. And even though AI is pretty mature technology, I mean, Tensorflow has been along for like four years now, yep. so it's like middle-aged. Right, but we're like one of the first companies to do uh, edge inference, so I think that's very cool. It is, it is neat. I mean, if I think of other consumer electronics products that consumer are using AI, I honestly, yeah, you might be right. We might be. I can name like one or two that are like in beta kind of tests. They're doing edge inference as a consumer fair, product. Yeah. yeah, so that's that's very innovative. That's cool. Yeah, cool. Well, I'm glad to see that you guys are working on this, and it's awesome to like kind of go over the tech stuff and then see like real-world tangible benefits for sure of like oh man we can classify radar guns we can filter out BSMs we can recognize MRCD accurately like it's nice to get some real tangible benefits to things that as radar detector users we've struggled with for years and I've just assumed it's as difficult it's tough there's not a good solution and so we're just kind of stuck with K-band falses yep. and the last I guess like the last point that I would like to make too which I think is one that might get overlooked sometimes we always try to be empirical in our development process. So we, we try not to assume things, but to test them. So, you know, hypothesize, test. It's a scientific method, essentially. In the past, if we wanted to test one assumption, doing things the traditional way might take weeks or months to test that. Doing things with a software-defined radio and AI means that we can compress that month-long cycle into minutes or hours. So our development process can go so much faster because we can say, hey, I have a crazy idea. I think this might work. All right, let's train the network and test it. Hey, that was better. Let's keep going in that direction. Train, test, train, test. And eventually, you're developing so fast compared to the old way that the technology just starts improving like that. It's, it's really cool. It's, it's an innovation accelerator is what I would call it. That makes a lot of sense. Cool. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of this cool stuff that you guys are working on. Thanks for coming. Of course. Thanks for having me. Thanks, though. It's a pleasure working with you. <laughs> pleasure. Likewise. Thanks, guys. All right. Thanks, guys. Glad, I'm glad I had a couple Tic Tacs because you guys are really close. <laughs> <laughs>